So this is a sodium ion battery and I'm not a big fan. I have a whole video on why it's not a good choice for off-grid solar, but today we're gonna rip this apart and see how well it works. First, I tested the capacity and it's rated for 100 amp hours, but I only got 82 amp hours and the voltage was very low. That's because unlike LFP, this has a linear curve and it's much lower for most of the discharge curve. And it's so low, in fact, it would turn off most inverters pretty early. So you wouldn't even get 82 amp hours, you would get less than that. For example, at 45% state of charge, I was getting 9.9 .9 volts. So after I filmed that last segment, I looked up the round trip efficiency figures for my last video, and these only get 60 to 92%. LFP is 95 to 99% round trip efficiency. So those capacity test results might actually be accurate. That's all you're gonna get because it's so inefficient. And like I said a second ago, your inverter is gonna cut out because the voltage is so low. So you won't even get 82 amp hours. You'll get more like 60 amp hours out of 100. But with LFP, you're gonna get 100 amp hours, which means with sodium ion, you need to buy more batteries, more solar, and a different inverter. We need new technology to support this linear curve. Also, these are not cheaper. These are double the cost of LFP, but in time they're supposed to come down, but I'll believe it when I see it. At the current price trajectory of LFP batteries, the shipping is going to cost more than these batteries. So it's so cheap. It's like, why even buy sodium ion? But you can use it at lower temperatures, or you could just use LTO for cheaper, or you could use LFP with a heater. So yeah, again, I just don't see the benefit at all. Anyways, this is not supposed to be a rant. I have a whole other video talking about all the problems with sodium my own batteries but yeah let's open this up and see what's going on So it states 30 watt hours for each cell and there's 40 cells in a pack. So 1200 watt hours. I think the results were accurate, but they're just so dang inefficient that that's all you're going to get. Now the build quality is not the best. The balance leads are not protected. They're soldered to these tabs, but the voltage meter is actually sealed. A lot of times it's not. Also, we have screw terminals on the BMS and it has Bluetooth. I actually have a fun idea. Let's do another capacity test at a 1C rate and see if it's less than 82 amp hours. Let's see how bad it gets. So first let's charge it to 100%. So now we're charging up and the voltage is so low that the 12 volt charger won't even turn on. So I'm using a manual power supply to get it up to a good voltage so this thing can actually work. And it's taking a while, it's been over 20 minutes at 10 amps. Something else to mention is it's not only inefficient at discharging, but also at charging. So it's gonna take more time to charge this with more energy. We're still at nine volts, it really likes to hang out there. All right, so we'll come back when it starts charging quickly. So I figured something out interesting about the low temperature performance. So this can charge down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit, but guess what? That's the discharge limit of LFP, which is below freezing. So in theory, you could discharge your LFP battery until it warms up and then charge it up at the limit where you can charge this. Anything lower than that in both battery chemistries need internal heaters. But the discharging temperature of sodium ion goes really low, negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit, which means sodium ion would be really good as a starting battery for cold temperatures for vehicles. Because for starter battery applications, it's held at a high state of charge, the inefficiency doesn't matter, and the discharge curve is never reached because you're never discharging it that much. But for solar, they are horrible. <laughs> I just don't see how anyone's going to buy these. Look at this. We're still trying to charge this thing up. We're at 9.5 volts and they still haven't switched on. Now this battery claims to have Bluetooth, but all the QR codes go to their website and there's no Bluetooth app to be found because I want to see what the state of charge is before it turns on the 12 volt equipment at 10 volts. Also, they claim it has overcurrent protection. We'll test that in a minute. I also put their name into the Android app store and there's nothing there. We are so close to 10 volts, come on. Now I've added a second power supply because it's taking forever. That means all those smart chargers that start at 10 volts won't turn on if you try to charge this from dead. You'll need a special charger. I don't know if it's a good starting battery either because yeah, this special charger thing kind of sucks. They need to raise the low voltage threshold and say it has a lower capacity so you can actually use it with all this equipment. You'll have less capacity, but at least things will actually work. 10 volts, we're there. They are not turning on. I thought they turn on at 10. Here's another battery charger. Let's try this one out. There we go. This one works. Now we have 50 amps going in. 
and that voltage is rising so slow, man. I am so accustomed to LFP that this is just crazy to me. It's probably almost at 50% state of charge. Let's check the curve. So looking at the curve, we need to be at about 25% state of charge for this stuff to actually work. And what's crazy is LFP doesn't drop below three volts per cell until 3% state of charge. But for sodium ion, it's 50 to 60% state of charge. So the voltage you get at 3% with LFP is what you get at 50 to 60% with sodium ion. Even lithium titanate oxide, it's supposed to be linear, but it's better than sodium ion. Sodium ion is like just the worst. I would say sodium ion is like a maintenance free lead acid battery going by like the coulombic efficiency, the volumetric density, the specific energy, the low temp performance. There we go, it finally turned on. Now they claim that it has overcurrent protection. So let's give it over hundred amps and see if it works. It works. It actually shut down all the way. So the BMS did its job. So let's turn off all these power supplies. Exactly 100 amps going into the battery. So in theory, I should come back in 30 minutes, but because it's so inefficient, I would say 40 minutes and then it will be fully charged. Something I didn't know about sodium ion is it tapers the current a lot earlier than LFP. With LFP, I can charge at full rate practically to like 98% and then it tapers off. But with this one, it seems like we have a lot of internal resistance and it's harder and harder to put current into the pack. Just another fun little surprise for sodium ion. LFP spoils us rotten and we don't even realize it. We are so close, we're at 12 amps. It's taking over 90 minutes to charge this, which means for an LFP, it's like 50% slower to charge. I cannot wait for this test to be done. I'm never gonna charge these ones again. And we finally got a disconnect, so it's fully charged. So now we're ready for the final test. We're at 14.5 volts. We're gonna draw 100 amps until we hit 10 volts. So let's press start. And things are starting to heat up. 70% state of charge, and we just dropped below 12 volts. Yikes. All right, guys, we did it. 64 amp hours at a 1C rate, and these cells are hot. Now, all the arguments for sodium ion batteries make sense for grid scale stuff in the future in about five years. But just imagine where LFP will be in five years. So we'll see which one wins. For low voltage systems with the inverters that we use for off-grid solar, the voltage curve and the efficiency alone make it unpractical. Now there are some companies saying that their sodium ion batteries are doing some amazing things and I would love to see it. If I can order one, send it my way and I would love to test it out. But till then, all the sodium ion batteries that I've read about and all the studies and everything you can buy right now are absolutely horrendous. But for now, LFP is the clear winner. I mean, by far, it's the cheapest. It works really well, super efficient. And the flat SOC curve just makes it so easy to work with. Now, sodium ion batteries for starting a car, that sounds amazing. I really hope they come out with something like that. But then again, you could just use an LFP battery with some heaters and just make it work with that and it'd be cheaper, lighter, smaller, better, more efficient, every, everything else. So yeah, maybe we can find a way to use these for something else, but not for solar. Now, if you disagree with anything or if you have new studies or new products, please send it my way. I would love to see it or post it on the forum. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.